take the lows out for me. Okay, this is a little bit. It's got a lot of high, but we're good. This is good. I'm good. I'm good. So not, okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, I think this one's just I feel like those are like in the three bears. I got one that works. Hallelujah. So let me tell you something. I know y'all don't know me, but I can tell you this. Being here is just a blessing to my soul. Hallelujah. It is a blessing to my soul to be here with men and women of God who have poured into me as a child. Yeah. And I know uh, Sister McDougal, we, I don't know what her title is right now, but to me she's Sister McDougal. Right. Being a child. She said, you can be a little healthy. Said, well, you know I'm a lot older now. So. Yeah. <laughs> I get to be a little older and have a little bit more weight on me, right. praise God. I'm not 12 anymore, praise God. But I am so, I was so disappointed that I did not get to speak to you when you were at, when I was in Laurel at Wings of Deliverance. But it gave my heart such a great pleasure to see you come in tonight, today. I am so glad. My pastor was actually talking about you all last night. And he said, what's that group from Waynesboro? I said, oh, I know it's Sister Meg Duke. That's what you're talking about. But don't be saying. All right. But we are so glad to be here. I am just grateful for all of you. I know that when you sow seeds in the lives of other people, you want to see a harvest. And I know that uh, Pastor Gray, Pastor Gray, Grace in the name, Sister Mary, Pastor McTougal, praise God, because that was, was a long time ago. But I tell you what, it is good to see the fruit of our labor, to know that you've sown something and it grew up. And it produced good. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now, I just want to give a few uh, shout-outs because I'm grateful to be here. And I thank God for the opportunity to Pastor McDougal, to her husband. Of course, to the honoree today, Assistant Pastor, Co-Pastor Dora Grayson McDon McDougal. McDonald. Y'all got the MCs working on me today. I got it all mixed up several times before I even got here. But I'm really grateful, of course, to see Pastor Lee and Lady Dorothy Lee. God bless them. And um, I am so grateful to see my cousin Ethel. She's here. God bless my sister, Katanya, my brother, Robert, who is here. God bless him. And uh, some of the ladies that came from our church, Sister Heather and uh, Lady Janelle, who drives us around wherever we're going. And I'm just grateful for all of you. I just tell you, and I was telling, telling uh, sis, I said, I hope y'all are going to sing something. Sing something. Said Jesus, say something. Yeah, right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I am just grateful. Listen, our time is far spent, and we have revival starting at our church tonight. And um, I believe I need to be there. Praise God. Uh, it don't start until 7. We'll get there in time. Praise the Lord. Uh, Y'all give me about 30, 40 minutes. I believe I'll say what he has to say, and I think I'll go to my seat. If you'll get your Bibles and turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. God bless each of you that I don't know to call. I'm just glad to be here. And I thank you for all that you've done and for uh, the ministry and encouraging this woman of God. These are the days I heard somebody say earlier that we need to be an encouragement to each other. We need to speak life to somebody else. Yeah. Don't just let whatever everybody else says and what the doctors say determine your outcome. We must believe what the Word of God says. When I was growing up in Waynesboro, I remember church a whole lot over there at Wings of Deliverance. Hallelujah. Church a whole lot with, with Pastor Lee and, and Sister Lee. I remember Sister Grayson. Y'all just bear with me. So Y'all call me gray, and I'm not a gray. I mean, I am a gray, but I'm not. All right, but we grew up in church, yeah. late nights, yeah. all day. You know, it does something to you when you learn how to, to love God and learn the things of God. Yeah. If we could just be a generation that would love God. Yeah. Not just love Him by coming and you don't know Him, but you really love Him because you're, you're acquainted with Him. He knows your name. And we 
I don't care how much you roll on the floor. I don't care how long your dress is. I don't care how clean your face is. I don't care if you speak in tongues for 10 hours. If you don't know the word of God, how to apply it in your life, you are still most miserable. You are still not accomplish the plan of God, the will of God for your life. God has a plan. Tell your neighbor God has a plan.
I told them, I said, the old Edna is gone. She died. Because God took me through some things that changed me. See, what we don't want to do, I won't get to my message, I promise. I got about it, somebody give me time for me. Listen, but the thing is this, when God takes us through something, we fall out. God bless you, Pastor Cassidy. But what, 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 what we do, instead of us growing through it, we fall out. Lord, why? You know I love so and so. I know you love so. Yes, he did. You know, God, I depended on that job. I, you know, I don't know how I'm going to make it. Well, who's your source? But Lord, you know my legs are hurting. My legs hurt too. But I know who is the healer. I know he made these legs. But I can't sit there and whimper and whine about it. I've got to agree with what God says. He said his word and he healed me. Hallelujah. That's what we should be agreeing with. You've got to know that there is a word. When I was preparing this morning, uh, well, I prepared before then, but this morning the Lord spoke this word to me. I'm going to read this first before we go to 2 Corinthians. The Lord said it this way. He said, there is a word in your mouth. There is a word in your mouth. See, that word that's in your mouth is not about how you feel. It's not a feeling. It is not that what God says is true. Whether I feel it, hear it, or see it. See, if we can get rid of depending on those senses. Well, I don't know how that's going to work. You don't have to know. What you do have to be sure of is that if God said it, He's going to do it. If He's spoken, He's going to make it good. So then I've been praying for my husband. I've been praying for my wife, and they still cut the food. Well, we have to agree with God. It's for me and my house. We're going to serve the Lord. I don't look at things as they are. I'm looking at things as they shall be. I'm not the keeper. You ain't the Holy Ghost. You're not the Holy Ghost police either. What we are called to do is to say what God says. There is a word in your mouth. Romans 10, 8 says, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. In thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Verse 9, verse, eight, verse 10. I want to go there. He says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth salvation is made unto, confession is made unto salvation. The thing that we get stuck at is that our mouths will say things that don't agree with the word of God. Right. What do you have to lose? What do you have to lose by agreeing with God? What you, you already sick. I mean, what do, you already broke. You already being talked about. What you got to lose by just saying, God, your word says, your bless me going out and coming in. You will open doors before me that no man can close. You said you make the crooked places straight. The valleys and the valleys you would exalt and the mountains and hills you bring down. He would bring down low. supposed to be 
be speaking what God says and agreeing with it until we see it come to pass. Agreeing with it. But, but even if you don't see it, we need to be like the children of Israel. He said, these all died in faith. Not having received the promise, but they believed them. You've got to believe it before you see it. You've got to believe it before you see it. You've got to believe it. The enemy is coming for your faith. You need to get this. Because what happens in life is that you'll have so many things that come against you. But the enemy's ulterior motive is to steal your confidence toward God. Can God? Yes, he can. one who has spoken and he brings it to pass. I needed to give that to you because I don't know who that's for, but I know he said there is and is is in capital letters, which means it should be exclaimed. There is a word in your mouth. If you would stop believing the lies of the enemy and start saying what God says, God would go and begin to turn things around for you. He'll begin to move on your behalf. He'll begin to shake up some people. Simon, 
Simon. Y'all got to say amen. Amen. All right. Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. I'm coming back to that. Verse 32, but I have prayed for thee. I have prayed for thee. I have prayed for thee. Why did Jesus pray for Peter? He said that thy faith fail not. That's not the only thing, but I want to, I don't even the best. I can carry it away. It says, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. What we need to glean from this as a truth. Nowhere in the scriptures do we see Jesus saying two things. One, Satan wants you. Two, I've prayed for you. So this was significant in the life of Peter. It was significant for the body of Christ. So Jesus said Peter was one of those people who was kind of always off the chain. Because Peter was radical. He didn't care. Peter was one of those people when, you know, it was time that Jesus was getting ready to be taken by the soldiers. Peter cut off the soldiers' ear. Because Peter wasn't one of those folk who played. He was always, he's 100 or zero. Yeah. But Jesus said to Peter, Satan desires to have you. He wants you. He has asked for you. He wants you so that he can sift you as wheat. The thing is this, when you sift wheat normally, you use it for something else. But Satan didn't want to sift him for wheat so he could use it for something else. He wanted his purpose to be denied, delayed, and destroyed. He wanted his purpose to be what? So and so is doing. I don't have, I, I've said 
sing most all of my life. I can't sing like a sister name. And I just, it, I, I, I don't have that anymore. Now the anointing come, y'all, just gonna be on. But I'm gonna need him to do that. It ain't me, Sister Jen. It's not me. Because I know where my help comes from. Hey, I know where my hope is. He says this. Satan desires to have you and you're worth having. To that he may sift you as wheat. Luke, the, the 32nd verse, he says this. But I have prayed for you. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. The thing is this. Jesus already knew Satan asked for Peter. He already knew Peter's test was coming up. He already knew Peter was going to fail that test. Amen. But he said, I prayed for you. Put a pin there. Don't you think that because somebody's praying for you that the enemy won't throw a wrench into your life and try to get you off and get you discombobulated so you lose your confidence toward God? No! Peter knew how to repent. Jesus told him. He said, and he told Peter, says, do you love me? He said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Y'all know us. You know I love you. He said, well, go feed my sheep. And Jesus says again to Peter, do you love me? He said, yes, you know I love you. I love you. Go feed my lambs. Jesus says the third time, Peter, do you love me? By now, Peter's agitated. He goes like, Jesus, don't you believe me? I told you I love you. Sometimes we need to be assured that our love isn't just with our words. with our words. There's some action that comes behind it. There's an action that comes behind it. If I say I love you, even if I correct you, doesn't mean I don't love you. It actually means I love you more. Our Sunday school lesson this morning talked about Paul trying to encourage the Corinthian church in 2 Corinthians to realize I corrected you. Don't you make me your enemy because I gave you the truth. That's it. It's not a feeling. We, I have been holiness all my life. So let me be clear. Us holiness folk, we cannot live by feeling. Feelings will change. Yeah. Yeah. Some days you won't feel saved. You won't feel, you didn't do nothing wrong, but you don't feel like praying. You don't feel like seeking God. You don't feel like
me love the beauty of the Lord, that I can inquire in His. You better talk about that. We desire too much of what the world offers and not enough of what God offers. Y'all, Sister Emily, you know, it's hot in here and, you know, all this hollering and screaming and yelling and, and, and speaking in tongues and running around and, well, that's just a little too much. We don't do that no more. We don't do that no more. We, you know, we just say, hallelujah, hallelujah. I can do that. I can do that. But it's not the words or the tempo that invites the presence of God. Fast or slow, we need the anointing that breaks you down.
Jesus knew that Peter had what they needed. You don't think that nobody needs what you have, but they do. Remember, I know you may not, but go back and read. When, when, the, when Jesus ascended and the disciples were together and they didn't know what to do, Peter said, I'm going fishing. Everybody else said, I'm going too. Peter was a leader. He wasn't the most educated. But he was the one they followed. And they all went fishing. And you know who they met while they were fishing. Glory to God. Jesus showed up and said, son, do you have any fish? Do you have any meat? He provided for them, but he reminded them, I called you. I prayed for you so that you could strengthen someone else. So that when you decide to make a decision, you make a decision, it's not just for you. He said, when you recover from this test, strengthen your brothers. They needed what Peter had. Though Peter didn't know he had anything that they needed. See, the enemy will tell you, you are so less than. You don't have this. You, when I was looking for, I wasn't looking for a job. The Lord told me to pack up my stuff on my job. I said, Lord, where is it I'm going? Because I ain't got no job. I ain't got no degree. I didn't have any of that. The Lord said, pack up your stuff. I said, you know... I did not. So count that to my hand. I was still growing in the Lord. Hallelujah. I did not. But the Lord let me meet somebody at a, one of our meetings. And they said, have you heard about this new law firm coming to town? No, I heard nothing about it. And then they started telling me all these things. And I said, well, you know, I don't have this and I don't have the other thing. And the man of God said, well, what do you have to lose? You already got a job. And I just thought, you know what? You're right. What do I have to lose by applying? They say yes or no. And I know it was God because when I went to the interview, I cried like a crazy woman. In the middle of my interview because I was so stressed on my job. And the, I told her that she asked me, what's your salary requirements? I didn't know because I didn't think that far. I gave her like three different numbers. And I just thought, she said, okay, okay. So she called me and said, you know, you're asking for a bit more than we normally pay. But uh, I have a good feeling about this. That opened the door for where I am now. And I cannot tell you how God has exponentially increased because of that one conversation that made no sense to me. Because I didn't possess a degree. I didn't know what a pleading was. I didn't know how to file anything in court. I had no experience. Except I made the people I worked for millions of dollars. Doing the little thing I knew to do for about $25,000 a year. Don't you tell me that we have to sit here and suffer through things when all God is saying, can you trust me? You've got what you need inside. Can you just believe that I will get you from point A to point B? Can you just trust me? Can you just know that I've already prayed for you, that your faith don't fail, so that you can be a blessing to someone else? Here, it says this. They must have needed what Peter had what had been sown into Peter, and they uh, must have needed it in order for them to be strong. You don't know what you have. Sometimes people tell you, sitting on a gold mine. Because you don't know what God has deposited in you, and all you are is sitting there in Lodabar thinking that you have nothing. But God has poured into you all that you need to be what he has called you to be. My subject today was supposed to be, I believe, therefore I speak. But I want to encourage you with that. You've got to start saying what the word says. It doesn't matter if folks tell you that you're holier than thou. You, you've got to start saying what God says. You don't know what the Bible says, pick it up and start reading it. Not reading it to preach it, but reading it to feed yourself. I will tell you about Sister McDonald's children. Those girls will post it on Facebook in a heartbeat. Y'all pray for my mama. And you know what the rest of us gonna do? We're gonna pray for her mama and her mama. We're gonna pray. Because your faith has to say, I don't believe that report. I believe God's report. Stop believing the lies of the adversary about you, about your spouse, about your family, 
Uh, yeah, I grew up in a hard family. Yeah, okay. Everybody was a, everybody was a, what were they? Let me think. No, my, my people wouldn't like that, but I'm trying to think. You know, they all drank alcohol every weekend. They all were womanizers. Everybody, everybody had children. Everybody got babies all over the country. Well, but it can break with you. You don't have to do what everybody else has done. Everybody's a drug addict in my family. Well, it stops today. I don't have to be what I've seen. I can be what he says I can be. I want to sing this little song, then I'm going to just pray for you. And I just know this. As people of God, the enemy would want you to be quiet. The scripture says, for since the time of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence, and the violent, not physically, we ain't going to beat up nobody, but we are violent when it comes to the word of God. We want to take the word of God and use it. The violent take it by force. We're going to grab the word of God and begin to say what it says. I'm going to sing this little song. Everybody, you can stand. I'm done. Praise God. I, I wanted to encourage you that these are the seasons where we should begin to say, listen, you think that people who are in leadership, your pastors, your deacons, whoever, that they just get it automatically. It's by the prayers of the righteous. Paul said, pray for me. If Paul needed prayer, what about the rest of us? Hallelujah. What about the rest of us? Why don't you pray for somebody what you want to happen in your own life? Why don't you pray for someone what you believe God to turn around for you? Why don't you pray for someone the healing you want to happen in your own mind? The enemy is attacking my mind. I don't know what to do. Well, get the word of God in your mind. Let it renew your mind with his word. Get that. I just talked about that her husband and sister. I'm getting that oil. Listen, I got oil all over my house. I will slather it on you. It still works. It still works. Would you bow your heads? I want you to be encouraged. I want you to be encouraged and to stand on the word of God. To know that if you pray, you don't have to be eloquent or perfect. You do have to have a heart that pursues him. I'm going to sing this song one time through. I don't have much voice up with me, so I'm good. But I want us to hear this. And be reminded. You don't have to look at me. I look the same as I did when I got up here. Just hot. That's all. But I want you to hear this. And I want you to take it to heart. God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill every
Thank you. 
Brooke, we have some. If you will just see Lady Janelle in the purple.